episode of your fabulous learning nerds i am your host your ghost host that is scott trudy and with me as always you love him dan coonrod (laughs) dan sir that is an Awesome drop. That's like Vincent Price laughing. I'm I'm so happy. I'm so pleased. That could just be my drop all the time. I like Dan the it Man. It could be. But I love I that. like Dan the Man. So would you yeah, say for sure. the ghost with the with the most? The, your ghost toast with the most. That's me. <laughs> That's a haunted mansion uh deep cut, sir. Have you been to the haunted mansion in Disney? No, no, I haven't. It's my favorite attraction of all time. It is totally awesome. But in the beginning, they go, they've go, they got a disembodied voice the whole time you're on the ride. And he's like, I'm your host, your ghost host. I think that's just awesome. Anyway, Dan, how you been, sir? I am fair to Midland, Scott. Fair to Midland. I was ready for it that time. I was expecting it. You know, I should have a spookier version of that. I should have had... A spookier version of that, but I did not. But it's that's right. totally, totally, totally okay. <laughs> yeah. At any rate, we are uh, not alone. We, of course, have um, our other fantabulous host, our co-host with the most. You love her. It's Abby Dawson, everybody. Abby. I love that drop. I heard the first scream and I was like, this is great. And then there was double scream and I was like, it's even better. Yeah, well, you are the scream queen. The scream queen of the fabulous learning nerds, everybody. Abby, how's it going? And and the only one who has divulged her costume That's to right. all of us. That's right. That's right. Dan, she's going to be a witch with all the accoutrements, which I think is fantastic. Daniel, are you even in a place with people where there may be trick or treaters coming to your house? No, I'm the only house on my street. Like, um, um, you're the you not, only house on your street. I am, you're that, that a driveway, it's, so it's just a driveway. No. I, mean, <laughs> it, I mean, sort of, yes. Uh, I mean, like you, you would turn on to my, the my road from the highway, not the highway, like a rural highway, and um, I'm the only house on it. So I probably won't have a bunch of trick or treaters. Probably none. Um, but the Halloween party I'm going to, I will definitely be dressing. Oh, what are you dressing up as, sir? We talked about this. I'm going as a modern day wizard. I've got a staff. i got a cool hat. Oh, that's right. Yeah, a la Dresden. Got it. Okay, nice. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, listen, we do have a special guest with us tonight. It's been a while since we've had our dear friend of the show. You, you love her. Um, all the way from Coach Hub, uh, Miss Jill Seeley. Jill. What? Hello. <laughs> I want to make that just like a permanent sound track that goes wherever I go. <laughs> right? Right. Absolutely. It's kind of like the evil doll kind of up. thing. Yeah. Like, are, are, here do you comes. like evil dolls? Are evil dolls kind of a thing for you? Like, I love evil dolls. I think they're I, the scariest thing ever. There, there are two things, scary children and scary dolls. It's, an, it's a hard path for me. Hard pass for you. Uh, okay. All right. Got it. Maybe, do you know who Bob the doll is? No. Oh, down in Key West, Chucky. Florida. Oh, Chucky. Well, they got the new Chucky series that's out. It's okay. It's not great, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, I will say that Bob the doll is a real evil doll. He's in Key West, Florida. You can go visit him if you want to. You cannot take his picture Hard without pass. getting permission from Bob the doll. 
a lot of people have done this, have taken the picture of Bob the doll. It then gives you a curse and then they have to write back and say they're sorry to Bob the doll because their life was just absolute poop show after they took his picture. Um, yeah, it's on Lore. Oh. If you've ever watched Lore on, on Amazon yes. Prime TV, it's no. pretty pretty cool. Yes. Have you I'm seen the Bob the Doll, Daniel? Out. Real quick. Yes. Uh, so actually, uh, my my daughter and I, we were sitting there talking about creepy stuff. And Bob the Doll is one of those things that we circle back and talk about a lot because it freaks us both mm-hmm. out a lot, a lot. Last thing we're going to talk about dolls. You have seen, everyone's seen The Conjuring, right? No. <gasps> You've not, not seen no, The Conjuring? What the heck is wrong with you? No, I don't, do I don't know even know if we can be I don't know if we can even be <laughs> friends. And you're on the wrong episode if uh if you're not going to do Boy. this. Oh, we've got another person dropping in everybody. Um fresh from Computer Issue Land, Glenn Brumley everybody. <laughs> Mr. Brumley. Hold on, I'm still dancing. Yeah, I, I see that. <laughs> <Which we're... laughs> All right, I'm good now. Glenn, have you seen The Conjuring, sir? Yes. Okay. The doll in The Conjuring is named... It's not Annabelle. It is Annabelle. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's Annabelle. Now, the original Annabelle is what kind of doll? Oh. I want to say the original Annabelle is like a Raggedy Ann doll. The original Annabelle is one of those giant Raggedy Ann dolls. And in the movie, they, they totally made it look. With her too. Oh, my gosh. And um, in the movie, they made it like this really wicked, evil, scary thing that no one would ever want to own. I think I the fact one. that. Yes. But... And, uh, I had a Raggedy Ann and a Raggedy Andy. Right. Nice and they were lovable and kind and would never hurt you. They're like big pillows. Yeah, but the the real Annabelle is a demon possessed life size raggedy Anne, um, which makes it all the more terrifying. Hey, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, we've got a very special episode. If you didn't figure it out, uh, today we're gonna have some fun during our favorite time of the year, and we are gonna just share some training horror stories, everybody. <laughs> That's right. So, with that being said, um, I can't, I have no idea what's going to come out of, especially your mouth, Glenn, um, when it comes oh, to come training on, horror stories. So, let's go ahead and we'll get into the topic of the week, everybody. Training horror stories. Yeah, so everyone's now thinking, Mr. Shooty, how come you don't put that much media quality? into your other show <laughs> training horse, i'm just teasing training horror stories everybody um those things that um we often talk around the campfire about um let's just go ahead and free for all who's who's got one who's got a training horror story something that went dreadfully wrong that we in let's make sure that they have um a moral or a learning to it <laughs> I have I have one that is it was probably one of the second or third times I had ever facilitated when I was um, doing predictive index much of the time. And I had this whole you know presentation put together of going through and teaching people. And um, I used to do this thing and, and it was very interactive, right? Because it's all about getting and keeping the audience like energized and engaged. And so we would go through the psychometrics and of course it measures your A, B, C, and D. Um, so I would, I would say, okay, I want all of the high A's to stand up and run to that side of the room. Well, I was doing this for a college course and I, and I had never met the group or, of individuals that were the participants. And in the front row, I realized just as I said, stand up and run to the other side of the room, you know, obviously there is a disabled um, 
lovely girl in the in the front row and I'm like or just move that way or let's just raise our you know what let's let, no like scratch that whole thing let's just all raise our hands <laughs> oh no <laughs> so audience awareness there's your learning of being that aware is your learning it's, it's yeah. your learning like know your audience and mm-hmm. and be oh, be ready like to just not be stupid <laughs> I don't know. I'm all for being stupid. I say go big or go home. Right. To not be stupid. That needs to be on the shirt. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. Glenn, I know you've got one. Glenn, sir. Uh, I've got a wall. Hey, man, I'm always up for a horror story because if there's a way to find it, I'm going to do it. Um, I spent the better part of an opening orientation and every time I would call on this particular particular person, I would refer to her as him. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That okay, was, was there a and reason for that, Glenn? Did the you act like they're like the, that would make like it okay, him? Scott? <laughs> well, I'm not saying you, you asked okay, them their like, pronouns ahead of time. Yeah, no, there was no clarification on pronouns. There was nothing. I just put my foot directly in my mouth and I was like, yeah, yeah. Da, da. So anyway, so sure. What's your thoughts on this? And it finally wasn't until after lunch that she came up to me and she's like, you realize I'm a female. And I'm like, you realize I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, Today's lesson was humility. <laughs> well, humility is important. At least we can talk about it. Yeah. That's really, wow. Yeah. I, yeah. That's awkward. It could, well, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I wish I could say I've made the same mistake, but I sadly cannot. So that's that. Sadly cannot? Like, I mean, no, I mean misery. for an opportunity, yeah. I'm sure you could find one. Oh, no, no, <laughs> I've got... I'm the only clown that's pulled that off? Probably. Sounds oh, like it. <laughs> no, I'm sure not. <laughs> Trender, right here. Yay, me! We had a, um, in a week-long session, um, we had a right up front we got to respect one another it was so important to the people that i served at the time that they had a slide on it like we are going to be respectful of one another i was training technicians right um and technicians are it they're they can be rough around the edges if you're a technician we love you i love what you do but occasionally you guys can be rough around the edges just fine right hey if you if you are not respectful to one another um you will face consequences up to and including getting dismissed from the class with no refund, right? And I remember I, I, I told this story after that slide, and I always said, I've never had to kick anybody out of my class. Never had to kick anybody out of my class. Please don't make it your mission to be the very first person that I'll kick out of my class. And I was confident, very confident that that was enough, that that would be the end of of that right but i was wrong and so what happened was we were going through some exercises and you know how people like children do this like this is what blew my mind like children can you know do the look around the room and okay the instructor the teacher's not seeing what's going on so i can do something like completely off the wall and gregarious and I'll, I'm, they're not going to see me, right? They're just not going to see me at all. And this person wrote on a big piece of paper, like a good, you know, piece of cardboard, right? Bob is not a good word, right? So wrote Bob is not something, right? Well, not something, Bob but insert this thing. whatever. Well, you guys could probably figure out what he wrote. And so, I mean, this group of guys like Bob is, the word started with G. So, I mean, you can figure that out, right? And so he's, I'm okay, you know this as instructors, we got eyes in the back of our heads. We grow them during the course of facilitation. We have to have eyes in the back of our heads. So I'm like walking around, making sure everybody's doing their stuff, not a back of my head. I see this, I see this one tech turning his head, turning his head, doing the head bob thing. Like he's going to do something and he wants to make sure I don't see it. And so he gets up and he holds up this sign. Bob is great, and uh, and you know, a couple people giggle, right? Because there's a bunch of people they know each other, and 
and then he does this sit down and hide the sign thing. Like he hides it like it didn't happen. Like this didn't happen. This didn't happen. Right. And um, I walked over to him and I was like, you knew I see that, right? You know, I saw that, right? <laughs> and, he, and he pulled the, again, he pulled the childish, like, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. So I'm just like, you need to come with me. And and I made a big point about it, too. I'm like, Be- because it was that important. I'm like, okay, everybody. And then I'm like, let's say his name was John. I don't remember his name. <laughs> he went out in the hallway. Grab your cardboard, John. <laughs> so we went out the hallway, right? And I said, you know that I have every right to kick you out of this class and not give you your money back, and you're going to have to call your boss and tell him why, right? And he's like, oh, well, I was just, I don't don't care. That goes against what we talked about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And then so I made him sit out there and think about it for about 30, 45 minutes, and then I allowed him. Out. I did, and I let him back uh. in the class because I honestly didn't know what I was going to do after that. I honestly didn't like, wow, well, okay. All right, because then I then I get to explain it to his boss, right? And and uh, so at any rate, um, I know I probably should have stuck to my guns, but at any rate, the uh, groovy part is I got to change my story at the front now. It's like I used to think that you didn't have to be the first person to kick, you know, but I actually did. I had kicked somebody, you know, kicked somebody out of my class for being a <laughs> moron. So yeah, that that was one. That was fun. I- I don't like kicking people out of class. I like torturing them. It's much more fun. <laughs> oh, he was. I, 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 I don't find that too hard butts. to believe, Glenn. That seems to track for me. <laughs> I think if you throw a person out of a class, I think if you throw a person out of a class, I don't think that you have done anything. But, uh, you know, really, you haven't done anything. I gotcha. All right. It was, uh, it was my second class as a trainer ever and uh of course i'm doing what every new trainer does is on day one i'm trying to figure out like what's a good icebreaker so i'm like oh i know what i'll do i'll do two truths and a lie and i was like okay great like let me find somebody who's sitting in the back and not paying attention and uh like i'll i'll, I'll grab everybody's attention we'll do this so i pick pick on a gentleman sitting in the back of the classroom I'm like hey man two truths and a lie and uh, he's like, oh, okay, well, let's see. Um, uh, I'm from Virginia. Um, uh, let me think here. I like to uh, go to the mall. And, um, oh, uh, I've stuffed my hand up a horse. And, like, needle drops. The class just goes dead silent. And I'm like... Uh, oh, oh, okay. What's, what's the lie? And he's like, oh, oh, I'm not from Virginia. And I'm like, uh. You're like, man, I wish you were. I wish uh, I <laughs> man, man. It would make more sense about the horse. I mean. Yeah. And so like, and so like the class is going wild. I'm l- totally losing control of everybody in the classroom. I'm like, wait, 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 just regular Joe Schmo looking guy sitting at the front of the class. He's super attentive. I'll pick on him. He'll have a real regular two truths and a lie. And I'll just get us back to running. Yeah. Glenn knows this story. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. So no, you could laugh. It's okay. And so uh, I look at this guy and I'm like, Hey, so-and-so like, okay, let's, let's, let's pick back up guys. Let's have everybody focus. Two truths and a lie. You, sir, go ahead. He's like, oh, okay. You know, my name is so-and-so. Uh, I'm from California. Um, uh, I'm a I'm scuba certified. And uh, previously, I <gasps> cut up bodies. And he sits down. Yeah. And I'm just like, um, <laughs> please tell me that last one is the lie. And like now, of course, the class is just, there's no way to keep order and control. Everyone is just like, what is going on? (laughs) And I'm just like, I'm like, please tell me that last one's a lie. He's like, oh, no, 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 it's not. I I wasn't born in California. 
And that's all he'll give. He doesn't want to like, I'm like, do like, I need to call uh, the cops? What is I, going on? <laughs> I, yeah. And that's what I said. I was like, I was like, Hey man, I really need you to explain that last one then or else I probably have to call the police. He's like, Oh no, it's fine. I used to be a coroner. And I was like, Oh, uh-huh. okay. Awesome. So guys, we're done with two truths and a lie. Let's go and take you a five the, minute break. The best two truths and a lie game and the worst two truths and a lie game right. are the same game. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. I was like, and so then going forward, whenever I was training a trainer and they'd be like, oh, what should I do for like icebreaker? And people always go, oh, two truths and a lie. I'm like, ah, think about that. Think about that. Oh, I love two truths and a lie. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I, that's not my favorite activity, to be all honest with you. Not mine wow. anymore either. <laughs> it's just not my favorite. Is what is your favorite, Scott? Oh my goodness! I like uh, I like the uh, audience interviews. So, like, go ahead and pair up and interview somebody else. I mean, there's some questions, and they got to talk about each other. I think that promotes the kind of activity that we want. And I think that the data. Oh my gosh, we're getting serious on a silly episode, but uh, the data will support that. Um, I actually did a study just this last year. The audience members kind of hate that. They kind of hate the go around the room and tell me your name and your address and phone number and what your favorite yeah. movie was. People people hate it. They, it's just such a, okay, here we go. I guess this is the price of admission. But w- versus can I go ahead and um, engage my audience right away? And I'm a big fan of, I'm a huge fan of, um, like, let's just start them laughing, leave them crying. Matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, I, I gave a presentation in Utah these people know me and they know that I love Halloween. He didn't figure that out. And so there's a, what? I showed the video of, have you guys seen the Jimmy Kimmel video? You know, Jimmy Kimmel does the rotten Christmas present videos where people send in yeah. parents who have given their children uh, bananas and stuff, you know, just terrible, terrible Christmas gifts and their kids freak out. Same thing. Jimmy Kimmel, you know, said, you know, or, the Easter Bunny has photos with the Easter Bunny. Um, Santa has photos with Santa. Halloween, why don't you get your photo taken with Michael Myers? And so what they did is they had free Halloween pictures. And these parents, these amazingly awful parents, sent their kids up to uh, inside a room. They had no idea what they're getting into. And there's a guy dressed like Michael Myers that they're going to get a picture taken with. It's glorious. It's absolutely glorious. It's a minute long. At any rate, everybody's laughing. Everybody's having a really good time. And then uh, from there, we can go ahead and open up. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of my thing. Either A, we get our audience to engage with one another on a personal level, keep it nice and short. Or B, um, hey, let's have some fun, right? Let's let's get the brain working and have some fun. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. I am reminded... Not from that story, but actually kind of, sort of. Like, has anybody ever had to train on either A, no sleep, or B, some terrible disease? Oh, yeah. Well, Ugh. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> let me, so I will tell you, I didn't have some terrible disease, but during COVID, when, when we first started coming back from lockdown, I facilitated a leadership um, session and I had to do the entire thing in a mask, even though it was a huge room facilitating it. And it was the worst, worst I'd ever done. And it facilitating in a mask was the worst. So, I mean, I haven't done it deathly ill, but I felt like I wanted to vomit after I was finished. <laughs> I'm talking about wanting to vomit the whole time I was pregnant. I, my pregnancy was not fun. Oh. I am so jealous of women who love being pregnant, but I thought I was going to be sick for for basically the whole pregnancy. And I remember standing in front of rooms thinking, we'll just see how this goes. This is <laughs> either going to be a really memorable oh, no. training or, or, or just pretty normal. But um, yeah, that doing anything while pregnant in front of a crowd was an absolutely miserable experience. I got to uh, I got to completely agree with you on that one Abby uh being pregnant being pregnant in that first class I'm not going to lie it was a touch and go for a good short minute <laughs> No I had a I had a flu that was horrible <clears throat> Excuse me and um trying to teach a class where you couldn't breathe was the worst for me I couldn't even crack jokes. I couldn't communicate. 
I couldn't get anything across. Um, it makes. I thought I was going to die. It makes it hard to hold a thought too, hard. right? Like you can't even. <laughs> it does. You can't. You can't because here you are trying to trying to breathe, and, and here you are trying to breathe. And I'm like, I don't even know what I'm going to do next. Yeah, no, that and and when you're on the road and you're responsible for imparting information, these people have paid to show up, and you're sick. You there is no backup plan for that unless you're tandem teaching, right? Which I've had the opportunity to do, which is great. Like, hey, I'm out today. Can you handle this? Right? Which is awesome if you can do it. But if you're flying solo, like most of us, you're kind of in a world of hurt, right? Um, I used to open up stores for Best Buy many years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, then we did a full long week uh, leadership training. It was great. Love that. Right. Do a week long with people. Uh, At the end of that week, it's great because you just, you know, you see growth, which is fantastic. And people come together and that's great. Well, the night before, I'm like, you know how it is. You're on the road. Check out some food. You know, what the heck? So I was out in, um, I think I was out in Ohio. I can't remember exactly, but they had a Chinese restaurant. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to go get some takeout. So I got some takeout. I got some Kung Pao chicken. I still remember it was Kung Pao chicken. And that, what, it had a lot of Kung and Pao and not a lot of chicken. <laughs> and so oh, the, God. the very next day, the very next day, that was interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, thank God it was a half day. It was a half day because every 30 minutes, I'm like, we're going to take a break, everybody. And we come back. You OK, Scott? Oh, oh no, no. I just like oh, lots no. of breaks on the last day. <laughs> lots I'm, I'm of breaks. That there should be like a standard of foods that you shouldn't, shouldn't eat. And if you're out outside of your normal comfort zone and you're in somewhere where you shouldn't be, Chinese food is something you should not touch. Because that is literally a hand grenade. And you're not entirely sure how that's going to go. You're either going to have great Chinese food. You're going to be like, oh, that was awesome. Or you're going to have Chinese food where as soon as you eat it, it's like pulling a pin and you're going to be like, oh, this is going to be bad. <laughs> I- well, I've never done it since. <laughs> never done it since. Will not touch Chinese food on the road. Will not. Go ahead, I had, Abby. Uh, I worked with some friends of mine um, years ago who were sent to an international call center to do some training. And they all went out, and I think all of them ate something together that didn't sit well. And like this is like three or four oh, people man. who are all basically laid up in a foreign country, just can't leave the room ill, don't want anybody to come in the room ill <laughs> for a couple of days. And it was yeah. praying to the porcelain uh-huh. goddess. Like- yeah, it was a rough one. We were like, do we bring them home? It's like an eighteen-hour plane <laughs> ride. Do we just save a couple yeah. days? It was oh bad. no. If they tell you not to drink the water, listen mm-hmm. to them. Don't right. drink the water. <laughs> How about tech issues? You guys ever have tech issues? I mean, I can't imagine anybody having any tech issues ever. I can't yeah, imagine ever not, not having working. tech issues. Yeah. yeah. Like, I was working for a company, and the um, we had a dedicated training server to teach the customer tool. And the customer tool was notoriously buggy anyway. And on the training server, it was just the worst. Like crashes were pretty a regular occurrence. And like my first couple of classes, like everyone would leave the class and just be like so upset and so demoralized and have no confidence in the tool that they would hit the floor to like deal with customers and talk to people. And like you could you could just hear it like they would they they would just be upset at the tool. Uh, so I started coming up with a game, which was basically like, hey, all right, it's day one. Our goal today is to break the tool. And I want you guys to dive in and just click around and do whatever you want and find ways that make the t- make the tool break. And just like jumping in front of it directly and making it a game completely changed the perspective so like when people would like be like, oh, yeah, the tool broke. I, I was doing this. I was doing A, B, and C. Like, oh, great. Yeah, like, let's, let's write that down. Good job. Like, you guys found ways to break the tool. That's, that's the thing. And uh, Scott, you were talking about like icebreakers. That became like one of my like go-to icebreakers. Like, all right, everybody, today's our first day. The first thing I want us to do is like, let's go ahead and bounce in. I know it seems weird, but I want us to start just clicking on stuff and seeing what we can do to break stuff. Let's start by breaking things. And that was always a pretty popular thing. And just trying to change that perspective 
of, oh, our tool sucks and everything sucks and it's bad to, oh, yeah, I was able to break the tool and this is how I did it. And uh, it, it I bet your tech out. team loves that story. <laughs> and I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they don't. <laughs> Good example, though, of, you know, taking and allowing um, failure in a very safe way. And now I've got a story about how I fixed it, too, right? They, they broke the tool, but they got to fix it, right? Or was that not part of the exercise? Or, we're not going to fix this. We're just going to break it. Yeah, no, no. The, the, tool, the tool was pretty bad, so there was no <laughs> <laughs> fix it. <laughs> yeah, no lie there, man. <laughs> well, you know, at least I can navigate it, you know. It, it, I, I I went through this in training with Daniel. I had a great time. It was fantastic. Yeah. It was great. Oh yeah. <laughs> Set that expectation early. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um. Anybody have to like totally punt their tech and go old school? Ever had that happen? No, because the, well, no, because the techs I had to deal with didn't care. You'd ask him for help, and they were just like, "Okay, hold on." Four days later, be like, oh, oh, did you, you needed help, right? And I'm like, nah, we're good. Thanks, pal. Yeah. We we're had, oh, we had <laughs> the first like big training project I'd ever like really had my name on where I got to design the whole philosophy behind the training and then build the whole training was a call center training. Um, and it, we wanted to move them away from like traditional lecture content to using your knowledge base and educating yourself, teach them to fish. And we were all excited. It was a whole new two-week training program that we built around this whole philosophy. Like, okay, now we're going to go to this section, go search your knowledge base for these terms, and we're going to like popcorn read or do some activity. They get out there. It's another international call center and find out they don't even provision the call center reps with access to the knowledge base until after they're done with training. And we're like, so none of this two-week training is even going to (laughs) work. So we had one poor guy using the trainer's login and credentials to sit in front of the class and project his screen in front of the whole room. We were like, oh, my God. It was brutal. Brutal. (laughs) uh -uh. I I worked for a large tech company. And um, one of the one of the ways I used to like show off as a trainer is I would bring one of our phones and I would have all of my training, my whole training deck and everything loaded on the phone. And I would bring like a, a Chromecast. I had like a first generation Google Chromecast after when they had first come out. And so like, I would go to a site and be like, Hey, yeah, I'm going to do a training today. Um, I'm going to hook this up to uh, your guys's projector or the TV. And then I just want to go get on your Wi-Fi." And it was always pretty fancy. Cause like, I'd look at everybody and be like, all right, let's get started. And I pull my phone out. And I would just run the whole training from the phone. Like, all right, cool. Like, here we go. Usually got a lot of good questions and it was a w- great way to show off the tech. And um, I had gotten in the very bad habit of just like leaving everything on my phone because like, oh, I don't, I don't need anything else. This is what I need. And like when I show up to a site and all I've got is like a phone and a Chromecast tucked into a pocket, like I'm ready to go. It's just like, it was fun. It was cool. Uh, I show up to a place and the site is still getting set up. And I'm like, all right, great. Yeah, I'm going to hook this up. I just need to get on your Wi-Fi. Oh, we don't have Wi-Fi yet. I'm sorry, <laughs> what? Yeah, we don't have we don't have Wi-Fi yet. Uh, you can just um, hook your laptop up to the, to the projector. <laughs> <laughs> um, funny. Funny you should say that. Uh, oh, yeah. Funny story. Uh, let me explain how what I usually do. Like, this is how we show off the tech. Oh, yeah. I just don't think we're set up for that. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, I gotta run the Best Buy real quick. I'll be back in like. Where's your nearest Best Buy? Oh, it's like about like twenty minutes away. Cool. I'll be back. I gotta go right now. Oh, crap, 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 crap. <laughs> um, but uh, it, that was the last time uh, that I didn't go someplace without like a backup or a laptop uh, lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I come from the world of redundancy, so I, I have to have backups. I have yeah. to, cause there's going to be that, that one time where I'm like, yeah, I can do this all off a laptop. And then the laptop just isn't working. And I'm like, Oh God, panic's kicking in. And no, I, I had a stroked out right there. <laughs> you actually could have heard the dogs in my head screeching to a halt. 
Watch my eyes flutter. <laughs> and how'd he die? He brought a phone. To hear to hear you That's can it. even get flustered <laughs> like that, Glenn. Like I've heard you tell a story about a car catching on fire in the parking lot, and you're like, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> I gotta tell you, <laughs> coming to you know teaching teaching a class how to fight a fire for me is easy. All right, we're we're, we're firefighters are well trained monkeys. If they understand the basic concept, they can do anything. You take me out of that element, and the first time that I went into a semi corporate environment, I was I mean I wasn't going to show it, <laughs> uh, but I was I was absolutely a hot mess like borderline wanting to just shoot meth up in the parking lot, losing my brain. Like I was, I was freaking out. I knew nothing. And, and, you know, and everybody's like, well, you can do this. Right. I'm like, yeah, I got it. No problem. And, and then I'd walk into this and be like, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. You know, my biggest fear was the, the three-year-old mentality. You ask a question and somebody would be like, well, why? Uh, Cause I went in there with it. Like, this is the questions. These are the answers. This is how we do it. And if anybody would have asked a question that was outside of that realm, <laughs> options were, I kill him or I'm going to lose my mind. I did know nothing. I knew nothing. Like I can do not. Those first two weeks were bad. That's the most relate. I think of all the horror stories though, I think that's the most relatable. Everybody's been there. Everybody gets it. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody's really scared of is like that imposter syndrome or, or being found yeah. out. Right. Like, who doesn't get that? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I, that was a horrible. That was I hated the first couple of weeks I was doing training, and of course I wasn't going to show it because I wanted to be good at it. But yeah, those first that actually I probably say the first month I was doing those first few classes were horrible, mm-hmm. horrible. I was I so I think we've talked about this before, but I was actually there for your your first few classes, and uh, I, I I remember you just being like. <sighs> Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> well, you were the one who told me not to throw chairs at people. Um, yes. Uh, whoa, whoa, I, I believe, whoa, whoa, I believe whoa, what? Whoa, what? <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Okay, all right. Record, all right. Let me explain. <laughs> I, had, I had a trainee that was kind of asking questions, and I would be like, hey, I'd have some answers, and it kept escalating, and it kept kind escalating. I basically, it got to the point where – I was standing face to face with this girl and I'm thinking to myself, I could punch her. And I'm not a guy who hits women. Let me be very clear on this one. But I was like, I hit her. This will be over with right now. I'll be fired and arrested, but I won't have to do this anymore. And poor Daniel had to get involved and he's like, we need to take a break right now. I'm like, but I can just throw the chair right out the glass window. It'll be all right. He's like, no, we're not going to do that. And um, it was bad. I'm, I'm, it was bad. Cause I come from this, I came from this paramilitary mentality where it was like, I'm the trainer. I'm the instructor. This is how we're going to do it. And uh, if if I'm wrong, it doesn't matter. I'm still this trainer and the instructor. You're just going to deal with it. And to have people that will come back and be like, well, I've got a question. Your question is irrelevant. I am the trainer. I'm the instructor. You will do as you're told. That doesn't work in a semi-corporate environment, especially for a guy <laughs> like me. I had to learn to play nice. Was this the same woman that you kept referring to as a heat? No, that was an entirely different one. Yeah. I'm um, with you though, Jill. That would have explained a lot. It <laughs> <laughs> um, wouldn't have made violence okay. Violence is never the answer. That's absolutely right. No, no. <laughs> I put that in the same category as I will never. I, man, let me explain this. You haven't done a lot of HR will, training, <laughs> have you? Oh. My HR, no. my HR manager referred to me as an HR train wreck because if there yeah. was an HR rule, I broke it. Like right yeah. off the bat. I was like, okay, so I can't say that. They're like, no. Okay, good to know. Good to know. All right. So I can't do that. They're like, no. And I'm like, all right, good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. So it's down. She was and and the funny part about it is our training man or the HR uh, the HR manager was actually from New Jersey too. Uh-huh. So she kind of understood some of it, but she'd come in and be like, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, all right, what's going on? She'd be like, did you say this? And I'm like, well, yeah. She goes, are you an idiot? And I'm like, well, yes. Well, yeah. She's like, you can't say that. And I'm like, absolutely. All right. Why not? She's like, because. And we lay like this whole litany of things why you can't say what I did. I'm like, all right, good to know. Good to know. So I kept her on her toes for the further part of about six months. Oh. Our whole so, team oh had God. to go to a. Oh, she was cool though. You know I'm right. She was. Cool. We had a we had a Glenn 
who I worked with years ago, um, and the whole t- <laughs> the yeah, whole team lame. had to go to an HR training. It was like a day long thing, and it was one of those things where the HR trainer came in ready to like just get the- get it done right. Like they're in that mentality of these are the things we have to say, and then everybody can go. And our Glenn in the room kept saying things that our the trainer would turn around and be like, "I can't even believe I have to address this." No. <laughs> and we all thought like, oh God, this we're going to all end up with some kind of discipline or more, tra- like we didn't know what was going to happen. And at the same time though, like it was one of those things where we're, we're trying not to laugh and the trainers, you know, people are going hypothetically, if this were to happen and the trainer's like, is it hypothetical or did it happen? And we're like, well, <laughs> so no, oh. I guess my question is this. Was it really a Glenn? Hypothetically, I don't person? even know what I'm talking about. Let me label. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> HR. Like, getting sent to HR is, like, the adult equivalent of going to the principal's office. There's 100%. nothing good that's coming yes, out of it. Yes, and yes, then, right. yeah. And those HR violations are... It's one of those things where, like, yeah. half the room absolutely gets it, and then the folks who don't, the rest of the room's like, how do you not get it? <laughs> yes. Before you know it, there's a third-party workplace investigation, right. hypothetically. Hypothetically. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, there's nothing better. Well, many years ago, this was a long beginning of my training career, right? We all talk about doing things that, I mean, you could get away with it, I got away with this for a long time and then um, I got in trouble and then that was it. And I would never even think about doing something like this, but we used to do culture training. So like 150 people in a room, pretty big sizable room. And we're going to go ahead and talk about company culture and we're going to spend two days doing it because it was that important to us. Okay, great. Cool. So I'm a rock star, right? So the, honestly, at that point in time, I've got fun things to talk about. We're just going to have fun. I want you to leave heaven. So my thing was like, we're going to start on time and end on time. One of my house rules, if you're late from a break, you will get up front with me and do the YMCA. Okay. So, uh, and everybody bought into that and honest to God, my audience for the most part loved it. And this is 30 years ago. Like you could get away with that 30 years ago today. People are like, are you insane? There's no way you could do that. But back then I would bring hats, you know, and all sorts of fun stuff. And everybody knew every, like at the, it, when the break was over and the music would start, dun, 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 and they're all clapping and cheering and people would be late on purpose. Right. And boy, did we have a good time till that one time, the very next day, the guy, oh, I can't believe you did that. And I'm like, what (laughs) we're just having fun at other people's expense oh yeah i didn't think about that part okay i'm sorry you know scott it brings up you know if you talk about things that are getting scary um see i tied that back to halloween never mind i won't explain yeah that's good um you know i would love to hear how everybody's yeah right just because you mentioned like that was 30 years ago we could say and do everything do you feel uh the pressure as an instructional designer as a facilitator like the box that you have to come the box is shrinking of what can be said or what may be offensive to an audience what crosses the lines and now we've got five generations in the workforce and so are you guys seeing that in terms of how you design and deliver your training? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. even, yes. even yeah. like trying to put together, like if you're trying to put a person on a screen, like that's not a simple like just grab clip art stock photo of a person holding a clipboard anymore, right? right. Like because you want right. to be thoughtful. But then like there are a thousand. Is this the right picture for this questions to go through it's well i mean there's that part of it but for me my my default and i was taught this my default from from a design perspective is always find something that my audience can see themselves in which is a lot trickier than it sounds like oh that's easy no it's not and i can't tell you i mean every time i'm reviewing yeah we need some diversity more diversity like you can't have enough diversity you cannot 
have enough diversity. You know, too. I'm sorry, you can't have too much diversity. You just can't, right? And so, um, and unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, a lot of the graphic warehouses where we go get that kind of stuff haven't figured that out yet. Like you actually have to go and be purposeful about that. I think that's great, right? So I think that that's great. Um, for me, I'm really focusing in on and what's helped me is like, what is my, you know, what's my objective and what am I, what do I, what about, what do I want my audience to get out of this? And that if I'm focusing in on that versus trying to be an inter trainer, then those issues are gone. Like you could still have fun and you could still, you know, engage with your audience with the purpose of at the end of this, there is a, uh, there's a lesson. Right. So even I go back to that video that I showed, right? And we talked about Michael Myers. Okay, everyone's laughing. But at the end of that video, I talked very specifically about Joe Dispenza, who um, is this like life coach kind of guy, kind of earthy kind of guy. And he was talking about if you really want to change, you have to step into the river of the unknown. And these kids, <laughs> funny as it might be, stepping into the river of the unknown. So we we make that connection. Like we we start out, we're having a good time. But if I do my job right, there's that connection at the back end of, oh, well, this kind of does apply. Oh, well, I'm kind of learning and having fun. Okay, great. And then if I do that, then everything that you've talked about, all this Hey, I'm worried about HR, right? Or I'm worried about, you know, keeping my job or all that kind of stuff nothing to worry about and unless what you're trying to impart doesn't have any real value wow that's, that's very deep for me when you spoke this episode Sorry. Scott. i like I that it's the kid that brings like healthy snacks to the <laughs> slumber party <laughs> like it's like who are you the guy who gives granola out on halloween Scott? Her? she's like, yeah yeah my hope is that is that people are listening to this because it's fun and it's different and it's change of pace. But, you know, at the end of the day, we all have the same things. We're worried about the same things. Like, mm-hmm. I'm worried about I'm going to get up and my laptop's not going to work. Been there, done that, right? Uh, I, I worry about disruptive people in my class and how do we how do we manage that? We could certainly spend a few more minutes talking about that. But, you know, hopefully that there's some wisdom aside from throwing chairs that we can all glean from chatting about stuff like this. Uh Listen, my make on it is this: um, from from any only any only perspective I give is, is is we joke around about the whole HR thing, and you're you're absolutely right. I just want someone at the end of all of it, no matter what I am teaching, to walk out of it with some type of knowledge. That's it. It's all I care about. I, I I we can half my training is is stage performance in my eyes because I'm up there and I'm trying to make people. Uh, trying to make people laugh and, and let their let them let their guard down a little bit, and at the same and then at the same time playing within the parameters that I have to play in. But when it's all said and done, all I care about is when they walk out of that classroom that they they took the knowledge, it, it actually got into their brains, and they're going to use that knowledge to be better employees because that's all that's all we care about, you know. So yeah, I, I mean, I might joke around with you and say that you are a Zen master, but you're absolutely right. So, and, uh, and the reason why I made the Abby comment is because she brings donuts <laughs> and that is rock star worthy. And I will go to any class she teaches. I will go because she's got donuts and I'm a fat Thank kid. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not above bribery. Yeah, I mean, my thing is, I, I always wanted people to leave a class feeling like a little more confident that they could do something, um, that they could learn something, do it there themselves, that, you know, it was a job that maybe they could learn to do. Not necessarily that they had to be ready to do it when they left the room, but that they were a little more prepared. And it, I always found if I was a little fallible myself, they were more willing to say, maybe maybe I can fail a little bit and, and still be okay. Yep. I'm not going to drown, you know, so... Well, listen, we're getting close to wrapping th- some things up. So I just want to give everybody an opportunity to share final spooky stuff with everybody. Final thoughts. Doesn't have to be serious. Could be whatever. We'll start with my dear friend, Jill. I really think that what I took from this in terms of, you know, the training nightmares and and tech disasters, like, you know, one of the things that I've learned is always bring an extra clicker 
<laughs> because if you lose your dongle, you're done. There's another <laughs> shirt. If you lose your dongle, you're done. <laughs> yeah. And guess what, Glenn? <laughs> that is HR appropriate because. Yes, yes, it is. Can I tell a quick story off of that? So I'm in this big, big networking meeting in Mobile, Alabama. The room is full of seven to eight figure people. Jill's in this same network group, right? And by the way, people that make that kind of money have no idea how to run presentations. They have no idea how to put PowerPoints together. They just don't, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm filming some stuff because that's what I was asked to do. And, so, and the head of this group, I have the most respect for this guy. Really, really smart, really great. It's like, uh, anybody know how to run this clicker? <laughs> hey, it's not working. Do you know how to run the clicker? And I go, wait. I've got one in my bag that I know works. So, you know, while he's up there going through stuff, I just walk up and I put the new clicker in, quickly test it, hand it to him. Here you go. This is forward. This is back. This is pause. That's how it works. You're like, you you had a clicker in your bag? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, we do. Always yes, we do. Always come prepared with your clicker and a backup clicker. And I, make sure I, you yes. don't lose the dongles. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Couldn't, uh, what are you doing carrying a clicker? Because I'm a facilitator. That's what I do. I have a clicker everywhere I go. I don't know anyone who's worked in training who ha doesn't have a story where they were so nervous or anxious or stressed that they sweat through their shirt. Like everybody's done it. But those are the same people who are like, they would get up the next day and do it again. So I, I think it just says this is a great career choice. People love it. You're going to get so much more out of it. So like you might be scared to death, but all the people I know who are in this line of work, they do it because they love it. Even if it's scary, even if you have to like buy extra deodorant, like do what you need to do. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so, so essentially here's, here's a legitimately, here's a spooky story. Um, we had a, we had an old timer that died. And um, at the fire department, and he decided that he was going to post post his death, decide for about a year to jack what is in the firehouse and would open and close the doors of the engine. And it's like three o'clock in the morning and you'd go down there and you'd start to walk through the bay and like, what's making all this noise? Because I'm figuring people are broken. In. You know, we're all figuring people are breaking in. And we walk around to one side, he'd close the other side. We'd walk to the other side, he'd close the side in the other door. And uh, for the better part of about a year, nobody really wanted to be there anymore. So that's my one spooky story. Oh. And then my one training story, uh, real quick, would be um, uh, don't be afraid to go into the unknown. I say do it. I say listen. I say make the mistakes because if you make the mistakes, it's going to make you a better person. I right, don't try to get fired, but make the mistakes. Go out there. The worst, the worst that can happen. You're going to get a write up. You're going to get a write up. That's that's the absolute worst to all of this. You know, I mean, as long as you don't do something egregious. Listen, I I can't back anybody who makes an egregious mistake. All right, but like like it's 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 okay to make mistakes. It's okay as a trainer to to make mistakes to screw up. These things happen. We don't learn from those. If we don't learn from them, how do we be better at doing the don't doing the job? So for somebody who had absolutely zero experience going into something like that and, and, and yeah, keeping my, keeping my HR manager on her toes a little <laughs> bit, it was good for her. I hope she gets I a Christmas card. Money, man. I hope you still send know, her. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, horror stories, the things that keep us up as at night as facilitators and trainers and content developers. and um, you know, something I would tell our audience and tell us is to keep that sense of like that kind of like fear of it all coming apart in mind. A lot of times people are coming into classes and they're in a similar boat. It's their first time, their first experience. Maybe you've run through the content so many times that you've gotten it pared down to a phone and a <laughs> Chromecast um, and nothing else. Um, so when things go sideways and that confidence breaks and you're like, ah, oh, everything's falling apart. You've probably got a class full of like 16 to 30 other human beings who all feel the same way and are going to feel the same way or some variance thereof. 
for however long that class is because we're pulling other people into these new experiences. And so as as you get those moments where you're sweating through shirts and you're shaking and you're like running the best by uh, running red lights, um, <clears throat> like keep that keep that in mind, not to like scare you and scare others, but to help like motivate you and to build experiences that are going to matter for your learners. Here, here. Well said. Well said. All good stuff. Yeah, I would. I'm going to piggyback off Glenn and just say, yeah, step into the river of the unknown, right? Every time, every, when you get in the swing of things, every time you have to teach the same class and we've all been there, try something new. What's the worst that could happen, right? The worst that could happen is it doesn't work and you never do it again, right? So I, I would do that. And I would just say thank you to all my dear friends, Daniel son. Yes, Could you Scott. do me a solid and tell our spooky peeps how they can connect with us? Absolutely. All right, party people, if you haven't done it already, and even if you have, reach out to us at email at learningnerdscast at gmail.com. Email us any questions you might have, join in the discussion, tell us your spooky training stories, or honest to goodness, just tell us your spooky stories. We'll pick one. We'll read it on air. It'll be awesome. If you're on Facebook, same story. Hit us up at Learning Nerds. Like us, participate in conversations. We want to know more. And for all our Instagram folks, we're Fab Learning Nerds. Share any groovy training pictures, facilitation, learning and development stuff you've got. We want to see it. Thank you, Dan. Hey, folks, that's going to wrap it up this uh, week. Be sure to do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Share this uh, podcast with your fans. Um, if you got some spooky stories, please email us at learningnerdscast at gmail.com. Until next time, I'm Scott. I'm Dan. I'm Abby. I'm Jill. I'm Glenn. And we're your fabulous learning nerds, and we are out. Um, before we go round the robin, I know we just did that round robin um, recommended spooky movie for Halloween. We'll start with Jill, who has no recommendations, I'm sure. Nightmare on Elm Street. It's a classic. Okay, Freddy Krueger. There it is. Freddy Krueger. Okay, a Abby. I mean, I love the Adams Family. That's a classic. How could <laughs> how could you not love the Adams family? Yeah. I love the Adams family. My son likes it. They they, <laughs> they no, the, I love them. They are just um, they are the most authentic family on television. I agree. Right I agree. there it is. Okay, great. By the way, um, they are making a Munsters reboot, and it's being directed yeah, by. Kill it. Yeah, you're gonna totally kill it. I can't. I forget the director. Uh, totally Rob, Zombie, Rob, Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie's oh. wife is going to play oh, Lily. Yeah. She looks just like new? Lily. Yeah. Uh, Glenn? Nice. Um, I actually just watched it the other day. Um, you can find it on Shudder. The movie is called Dash Cam. It's filmed in the same style as like the Blair Witch Project in, in that gonzo found footage type of thing. Right. And it won a couple of awards, I want to say in Italy. But uh, yeah, it was good. It was spooky. It was... It hit all the, the little bells and whistles for me that makes a good horror movie. I recommend it on Dash Cam. Dash Cam. I'll check that out. Daniel. All right. So actually, I got a chill just thinking about this movie. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen Jacob's oh. Ladder. Oh. Uh, okay. No. Uh, so I've got a quick story. Uh, I, was, I was maybe 10 or 11 years old, and my parents had rented it on video cassette. That's how old I am. And um, I was always a night owl, even growing up. And so my mom, you know, grabs me up one night and she's like, hey, your father and I are going to bed. I'm like, all right, cool. Good night, guys. And she's like, hey, listen, I know you get up and I know you watch TV downstairs in the living room. Your father and I rented a movie. It's very scary. Do not watch it. Yep. Gonna do it. <laughs> I mean, she might as well have just said, I've hidden candy and 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 Transformers cartoons in the VCR. Don't Everything touch Everything you love is in so a of bowl. Course. <laughs> Don't touch yeah. it or eat it. Especially not yeah. the... So, of yeah. course, as soon, as soon as the door shuts, I'm downstairs. 
And I begin to watch Jacob's Ladder as like a 10 or 11 year old. Um, I cannot tell you how terribly that movie messed up 10 year old. I, I must have been 10, 10 year old Daniel. Uh, so bad at school, I broke down crying, asking the teacher, oh, Am I alive? Am I even alive? And that so, poor of teacher. course, of course, of course. <laughs> Of course, my parents get called and my mom comes to pick me up. And the first words out of her mouth when she sees me is, I told you not to watch that movie. And you went and watched it anyway. And so we're in the car driving home and I'm like, sniffing, you know, rubbing my eyes dry. And she's like, you watched it. And I'm like, I watched it all. And she's like, I told you, I told you not to. And to this day, to this day, oh, uh, I cannot think about Jacob's Ladder without just getting freaked out. It's so bad that my kiddo, who's 15, is like, oh, we should watch some, we should watch some scary, freaky movies, and let's make a 30 days of Halloween movies list. And sure enough, she was like, hey, I heard about this movie called Jacob's Ladder. I'm like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You are forbidden to watch that movie. Not. It's like yeah. Salem's Lot to this I was day. Like, I, was like, I was like, you can go watch it. You can absolutely go watch it, but I, I will not. I, I've watched it once, and once was enough. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. That is great. Final story. Since you've told a story about a scary movie, I will share mine. In 1975, yes. there was a made-for-television anthology horror film called Trilogy of Terror. Has anybody seen this oh, movie? yeah. With Karen Black. Okay, Glenn knows exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. So the first two uh, segments are pretty meh. The last segment is called uh, Amelia. And by the way, Karen Black, uh, famous actress, she's in every one of the roles. And um, essentially, so I'm at a friend's house. He's like, we need to watch this last segment of Trilogy of Terror. And um, basically, it's about a woman at home and why she bought this for her boyfriend. I don't know. But this really horrific looking Zuni voodoo doll. Right. And the thing is, if the chain around the voodoo doll comes off, it would come to life. Right. And the rest of the 30 minutes of this segment is this little doll, horrifically disgusting, big teeth with a spear chasing after Amelia. And gosh darn it, if it didn't freak me out, like I lost it. I was so scared. Um, If you I. If you ever go Google this movie, you will see the doll, right? We, the, why and then are we, we talk- back to scary dolls? <laughs> like, you come dolls are full awesome. circle. Full circle, right? <laughs> so the doll, I so saw I'm in my friend's room, and we're sleeping over. It says sleepover. I'm in his room, and he's got one of those older, this is a way old, like 1980, whatever, and the clock's going, doom, 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 doom. I'm like, I'm looking all around the room, right? I'm super scared. So I can't stay in this room because that doll is going to get me. That doll is going to kill me. So I go to the living room where the lights are on. And I go lay down on the thing. And again, I'm looking all over, up, down, all left, right. Like that thing is going to get me. It's going to get me. It's going to get me. Now I have to pee. Now, in order to pee, I have to go to his parents' bedroom because that's where the bathroom was, the closest bathroom. And I'm not going through the rest of the house because it's dark. And the doll is going to get me. So, yeah, right. They had... Two giant German shepherds that slept with them. So I open up this door to go to the bathroom. Very quietly open the door. They both jump out of bed, barking as loud as can be, and tackle me. So now I'm on the ground with two big, giant German shepherds on me, licking me by this time because I knew who I was. I screamed, ah, ah. I wet my pants. I'll admit that on the radio. We're totally just like Aww. totally wet, just shaking uncontrollably for a good hour. Um, that movie will mess you up. Trilogy of Cherry. Go check so it out. So, Scott, oh, I know that's that. scared you, but you know your friend's parents were probably terrified that they were going to have to call your parents and explain what just happened. <laughs> they were laughing their ass off. They thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And they told my parents the next day, oh, I didn't go home. Oh, no, they put me on the couch. We watched the, the, the odd couple. I fell right to sleep. So, um, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Um, 